Good morning, this is Pastor Larry. It's Tuesday and um, Tuesday Teaching Tidbit. Today's Tuesday, June um, the 11th, I guess. Yeah, Tuesday, June the 11th. And uh, I'm retired, so uh, I don't always keep track of the exact calendar date in terms of uh, the number, but I usually know it's Tuesday, which is that's good, and I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that I, I know that. But um, anyway, I wanted to uh, keep in, te- in uh, keeping with what I've been doing recently, which is because I said before, I, I personally believe that uh, we're in the end times because a lot of stuff's going on. People are crazy, and a lot of things sort of are tracking with things that I've noticed in the Bible. And, um, and here's what I'm going to say is it may not be the end times for everything, like all of creation and all that good stuff, which, but I do believe that. But even if it isn't the end time for all of creation, it's the end times for us because once we were born, the clock started ticking. And whatever you lived to 100, 120, or, or 60, 70, or whatever, this is the, the uh, it's the end times for you because when you were born, from the moment you were born, the, the clock started ticking toward your end time. And so with that in mind, I would ask that you listen to what I say about how to make sure that our relationship with the Father is right. Because it's all about relationship. It's not about religion. It's not about the church you attend, uh, the people you hang around. It's about the relationship with the Father. And that relationship is cemented through what we do with His Son. I know it's a whole bunch of religions, a whole bunch of, of chatter out there, but What you do with his son is the most important thing. And uh, I've said this before, but our words are what um, is what starts that whole thing going. My wife and I, our words, when we stood before a minister, our words set the pace for our covenant. And uh, so your words set the pace for your relationship with the Father. And those words would be the generic uh, basis of those words would be, Father, I accept your son his sacrifice for me. I believe he's Lord. I believe he's your son. And I believe that he's the Lord. And that because of his death, burial, and resurrection, I accept him as my Lord and Savior. And that makes you my father. So that's the generic basis. And that's really all it takes to change your relationship from someone that's on the outside looking in to be on the inside helping part of the kingdom. And uh, so if you've made that decision, I would ask that you would also reach out to, um, to a good local church and, uh, and, and, and just get involved. Because just because your spirit is what changed that relationship change, but your mind needs now to be renewed. How's it get renewed? By reading the Word of God, by getting to a Bible-believing fellowship, and fellowshipping with other people. The beginning church, it says that uh, they went from house to house, and the Lord added, added to the church daily. Uh, because of the fellowship, because of relationship. And so that's what I recommend. Oh, by the way, you can reach out to us, uh, reach out to me if you have any questions, comments, or, or whatever, at pastor. the letter L, S H A D D A I, at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Please drop a comment, hit the like button, subscribe, notification, and share. Because I do believe that uh, it's, I'm not putting this out there just to hear my hear myself talk. I don't need to see myself on, on, on the video or, or I don't have to hear myself either. As a matter of fact, like most people, I don't like the sound of my voice when I hear it live. <laughs> you know, so anyway, just that's, that's neither here nor there. Uh, what we've been talking about is the truth, and today is the truth part seven. And uh, I've been sharing some things like last week I shared, uh, I believe it was last week or the week before, I shared about how um, Benjamin Netanyahu his, his uh, family's original name was from Poland. That was Milikowski, and they changed their name. And then I also shared there's, um, that uh, there's evidence. As a matter of fact, let me just see if I have this one here, and I'll read it if I have it. It may be on my other phone. But there was, uh, it talked about, um, about, oh, yeah. It says Yiddish. Uh, there's a Jewish geneticist. His name is Aaron Elhake. He's a geneticist, a scientist. And he's done a lot of study on this area, as well as some other people that are Jewish. And they, they recognize that they are really from, mainly from Europe. And, uh, but, but please bear with me because 
I got some more information coming that also should be integrated in this. But um, it says Yiddish may have, this is an article from April 28th, 2016 in the Wired magazine, and it's by Matt Burgess. Yiddish may have originated in Turkey, not Germany. And a lot of people believe that, uh, and there's a whole bunch, you, you need to read the article. I think I'm gonna go in the whole thing. And uh, even uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's son, his DNA was leaked and it showed that uh, he was mainly just Polish. It was nothing from the Levant or the Middle East. And, um, but, but like I said, bear with me. But a lot of, um, a lot of Ashkenazi Jews, a number of them, it shows, there was articles from 2013 from a couple of magazines that showed that a, a large number of Ashkenazi Jews were, had no um, lineage tracing back to the Middle East. However, doesn't mean all of them didn't. And, and so I'm going to read some scriptures to, to, about that. There's a, here's a scripture as well that uh, shows you why we should see here's what happens bias goes both ways you know like uh just because one group has, or people may have bias about something doesn't mean you don't or prejudice or things like that and so sometimes our our thinking is biased because of things we've heard or or or, or have come across and so i want us to at least me I believe when we keep love at the, as the foundation, love sorts of it disintegrates bias. Um, like for example, I'm going to get to the scripture, but uh, just like we have bias right now with things going on, I'm, I mentioned on, in the message on Sunday that uh, you can't just say all these people are good and all these people are bad, or you can't say all these people are bad and all these people are good. You can't do that. That's bias. That's that's taking a group. It's making a group statement. And allowing that to, to set your life uh, trajectory. Um, like, for example, I talked about how you have what's going on over in Gaza and Palestine. Everybody in Palestine is not bad. Yet you have people that have a label of Christianity saying we need to destroy all of them. And I don't believe the Father, I don't believe that's its heart. I believe there's people there that can be saved or people there that may be already believers. And we're talking about wiping out a whole group of people. And then we're saying all, the way we're saying it is that these people are bad and they deserve to be killed. And yet we're saying all every Israelite, every Jewish person that identifies as Jewish is good. And they aren't either. They're human beings. And so that's what we need to distill it down to, the human being factor. And, uh, and recognize that we're all human beings. And, 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 and remove the bias as much as, as, much as possible. Uh, like I said on Sunday, and I shared on here before, if if you really look at the word of God, when 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 Joshua was about to go and take and 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 with the children of Israel, and they were their job was to totally demolish Jericho, right? And yet, when Joshua and I believe it's Joshua chapter five, where the angel, the captain of the Lord's host, appeared before him, and Joshua said, "Whose side are you on?" And he said, neither. I'm on the Lord's side. That removes bias when you're on the Lord's side. As a matter of fact, and then the very next chapter, it shows that not only they were supposed to re, re, um, take over Jericho, yet one of the, the people, one of the inhabitants, residents of Jericho, was instrumental in helping that happen. It was Rahab the harlot, who not only helped them, was instrumental and, and this, with the two spies not being captured. But she also was instrumental with her family and instrumental in the lineage of the Messiah. If you read in Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 1, you'll see that Rahab married Solomon. Solomon. Salmon, I'm sorry. And Salmon had, a, he, him and his wife Rahab had a son named Boaz. And Boaz married Ruth, who was a Moabite, again, not from the children of Israel. And that's all in the lineage of the Messiah. Interesting, isn't it? Shows that he distills it down to people and relationships. That's the truth. Listen to this. This is in Luke chapter 21, 24. And a lot of people read this and, and I lo and this scripture opened my eyes to a lot when it says, because at this time when the Messiah is talking, this is the only group really left is the Southern kingdom, which was Judah. Basically, and basically Judah, there were other uh, bits from some of the other tribes as well, Benjamin, Levites, and some of the other tribes had, had uh, settled there as well. But when he's talking, 
He's telling the, his disciples the, what's going to happen in the end time. In verse 24, it says, and they, and so this has been after children of Israel come out of Egypt and, and all the Babylonian, Assyrian captivities and so forth. And it says, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And listen to this, and shall be led away captive into all nations. Captive means you're a slave or you're a prisoner. And they're, they're led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So for people that want to say that the children of Israel or the people that are in Israel now, that none of them are the children of Israel, none of the Ashkenazi Jews are, 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 are direct lineage of, um, of Israel, you're wrong because it says here, unless the word is wrong, the word could be wrong maybe. How about that? But it says, they shall be led away captive into all nations except Germany, Poland, Russia, Ukraine. We can't grab it for and use it for one thing because there's a certain group of people that has basically been led captive into all nations. But we can't use it that way and then say, well, yes, we were led captive into all nations. There's only one group of people that, that, that fits that after the Messiah said that, which was, would be the people that were in the African diaspora, the transatlantic slave trade. You can't say that to bolster your case on the one side and then on the other side dismiss any claims of anybody that was in some of these nations that are under the category of all. You follow what I'm saying? And I think what happens is, again, we have bias that can go both ways. And when you go back and you say, and you say instead of being on somebody's side and you're on the Lord's side, it allows you to, to have a macro view and a, and, a, and a micro view at the same time. A macro view, you step back and allow the word to, to set your the parameters. And then the micro is when you come down and you deal with people as individuals instead of uh, just a nation or nationality or a group that you don't like or, or don't, want to, uh, don't want to acknowledge. And so it does say that uh, they were led captive into all nations, and that's the truth, or the word's not true. But in John chapter 17, verse 17, it says, Thy word is truth. It says, Sanctify them by thy word. Thy word is truth. And then here's some more information that uh, should be part of our basis for dealing with people. Is that, in, like I said uh, before, in Exodus chapter 12, verse 43 through 49, it shows that the stranger or the foreigner that's willing to subscribe to the things that the Father has put out there for them to follow, uh, circumcision being one and the Passover and all that. What well, says that that stranger that's willing to adhere to his his commands, his commandments and as um, and his law, that that stranger is to be treated just like any other of the tribes, the foreigner among you or the stranger. And so, instead of looking to divide, we should be looking to be on the Lord's side. Because when we do that, it'll allow us to be, to really be his his um, his agents, his um, his ambassadors, and uh, and again, I said before, like at the end, the father is responsible through um, through through his angels to to separate the wheat and the tares. It's not our job. Our job is to is to love and to be on his side. There's um there's a lot going on. A lot of division, a lot of deception. And the worst deception is self-deception. When you base uh, build your, uh, the case for your own lies, or, well, you might call it a truth, but you use faulty information to build your case. And if you want the, the correct information, I would always go to the Word. And always look at the, and, and look at the Word in context, context of the Father, of who He is. He's a, he's a Father of lights, it says, but he's also love, the whole source of love, and that he loves every individual. He doesn't just love your people, your tribe, your community. He loves everyone, and he's look, and that's why he says even the stranger is 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 going to be pulled in. As a matter of fact, in the book of Revelation, since I said I believe we're in the last times, end times, is that it says that every tribe, every tongue, people from every tribe and tongue and nation are present in the kingdom. It's not just one group. One group was responsible for bearing the line and the lineage of the Messiah. One group was responsible for, for, for maintaining, uh, trying to maintain God's word, his laws, and things like that. But 
but that doesn't mean that that one group is the only group that the father was was trying to save he was trying to bring this messiah here for everyone and his truth is for everyone his love is for everyone it's not for individuals so the 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 greatest truth that i have to say share with you over these set last uh, seven lessons is that um the greatest commandments is to love the lord your god with all your heart mind and soul and to love your neighbors yourself and and then that truth like i said before is you don't get to pick and choose your neighbor you know they anybody can move next to you they, they may be a pagan or whatever else you need to love them doesn't mean you have to go along with them. Love, just because I love somebody doesn't mean I have to approve and, and, and agree with everything they do. You love your children, or if you have children, you love your children. Yet they don't do everything right. They're not perfect. Which is really weird because we are, right? I'm joking. But uh, we're not perfect. We need mercy. We need grace. And we need to, well, we should. I should I'm not going to tell you what you need to do. This is what I should do. I'm going to give a quick example, and then I'm going to close out. Uh, it was a number of years ago, I remember, and I probably said this, shared this before because it's very appropriate. I was driving along, and I pulled into a road, and somebody was in the lane. I was trying; to, They were already occupying the lane, but I didn't see them. And I blew my horn to let them know that I, was, I didn't do it on purpose. I apologize, and, and I'm going on my way. And maybe a couple miles later, someone does almost pretty much something similar to me. And now I'm like, I can't believe they're not, what, didn't they see me, you know? And what the Father showed me through that experience is that um, when I do wrong, I want mercy, right? I mean, I want grace and mercy. But when someone else does wrong, I don't want to extend the mercy and grace, you know? I wanted mercy and I wanted his grace of that driver. But when the driver did something to me, I, I wanted uh, justice. I didn't want to extend mercy or grace. And he showed me that. So if just as, that in, as an example, if I love other people, I'm willing to extend mercy instead of justice. I'll allow the Father to uh, dispense justice as needed. As a matter of fact, um, really, if anything, if we're for real, for real, we should be praying for people, the ones, especially the ones that we want justice to be to be administered to because they need it. Our Father doesn't want anyone really to have that ultimate punishment, which is to be without Him for eternity. That's that's really that's really a punishment to be without the Father for eternity, with no way to get back to get to Him. Take advantage of the time that we have now. That's why I shared that uh, salvation, uh, the way to salvation, at the beginning of this, is because it's the most important thing when. Death is r real death. Spiritual is spiritual death. Real death is being separated from the Father, and that's what happened to Adam and Eve when they when they sinned. They were separated from His presence. Real life is being united with His presence. You want eternal life. We want eternal life forever. We don't want real death. We don't want real death forever. So listen, I love you. Appreciate you um, sticking out and sticking this out and listening to this. Let me just pray over you right now, because I want I want the Father to really bless you, Father. I pray for everyone that hears this, that you would work in their life, Lord God, and that work in their family's life, Lord. Work in every situation, situation, every circumstance to bring it together for their good. It says in your word that all things work together for the good of those that love you and are called according to your purpose. Lord Father, I pray for everyone on here, Lord God, that even if they don't love you yet, that they would be drawn into a relationship with you and know that you are love and learn to love you, Lord God, so that everything would work together for their good and for their family and for every circumstance that they find themselves um, in, in front of. Bless them, Father, in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior. Yahushua HaMashiach, I pray. Thank you, Father. Yahweh bless you. Love you and keep you. Don't forget to hit the like button. Drop a comment. The comments really help. Uh, hit the subscribe notification so you know when these videos pop up. Share it with somebody. Share it with someone you love. Someone that may need this. Because this isn't just for people that we like or people that are like us. This is for everybody. 
Yahweh bless you.